Hey, what's up, everyone? Hey, I'm uh, Ken Tu. If you don't know me, I'm Ken Tu Sankara uh, from Black Empowerment Movement. I have my comrades, Rakim Balagoon. Yo, peace and power. And I have King Ace. And uh, King Ace, uh, tell people about yourself. I want to do a little brief introduction and, um, you know, tell people about yourself, your platform, your organization. Uh, my name is King Ace with the Black Girl Family Movement. We have a... Uh, a revolutionary nine point uh platform where we do different community uh survival programs we work in uh conjunction with guerrilla mainframe and other uh, revolutionary organizations to create a newsletter and we have a program called the vanguard community survival program where we try to give back to the community you know with theory putting it to practice and and uh and that's good shit. And Rock Kim, I don't even feel like we need to introduce you, but go ahead, man. Tell the people about yourself and uh your platform and organization you belong to. Most definitely. Um uh, of course I'm Rock Kim Balagoon. Uh, and for those who don't know me, uh, I'm just a, a local organizer here in Dallas. Uh I've organized with numerous groups here in Dallas. And pretty, pretty much the majority of the ones that are revolutionary. I've done had some type of relationship or or you know had some type of coalition of solidarity with them, such as you know, GML, um, you know, BEM, um, he would be the gun club, Geronimo Tactical, and of course, uh, Black Royal Family, you know. <laughs> Already one of the groups um, I work with today. Man, good shit. And everyone that's uh watching out there, please be sure. Hey, go subscribe, like, share this. Uh, right now, we're going live. Uh, I see you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rich Ross, we see you, baby. Appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate that. And please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, share and like. All right, let's, let's jump into this. Uh, Rakim, I'm going I'm to ask you this. I feel like uh, you the subject matter expert on this. Uh, just real brief, what is Black August for the the people that are out there that don't know what is Black August? Okay, um, Black August is a month um, where Black people, um, as a whole, um, acknowledge not just Black people but all people can participate in it. But the highlight is for you know Black people who are incarcerated as political prisoners. Um, as well as um, acknowledging um, the culture of resistance historically. Um, of course, it started in prison um, with Black August and it initially started with a couple brothers in prison, you know, um, doing certain things such as doing political education together, um, working out, um, um, as well as things such as fasting, it has that there, there are numerous ways to practice it, you know, um, and and of course to be uh, specific, when I mean fasting, I mean fast from food, as well as uh, media and other um, things that may um, distract you or your focus from, um, you know, the culture of resistance. And so, you know, it started in the prison system um, it, and, you know, different prisoners, it made its way out that particular prison system and made into numerous prisons with different um, prisoners doing it in solidarity. Of course, we're speaking of, you know, prisoners of consciousness, you know, it's not something that, you know, everybody's doing in prison, but this is something for those who believe in a revolutionary spirit to do so that's what black august is about um it's definitely about uh culture resistance and a culture of honoring those who have resisted on our behalf okay all right and i'm glad you brought that up because uh i don't know about you and uh you and ace feel this way but i feel like a lot of time that get lost in the shuffle because it black august the, the sound of the name black august is catchy but i don't think people are uh, really gravitate to the people first of all that that created black august or in and, and know the people that 
you know, started it in um and behind the wall. So I think a lot of time that you know, people that's new to Black August kind of uh don't know that history of how it was founded and and I'm glad it's you know it's starting to pick up and people get to know the true history behind it as well. Uh uh King Gates, let me ask you this, like like you know, if if I'm correct now, correct me if I'm wrong. You 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 served a little time too, right? Yeah, I did seven years. Yeah, did, did you know anything about Black August behind the wall, or did you hear anything about it? No, I, I didn't. I didn't never uh, heard about Black August until I uh, came to Dallas and yeah, linked up with Gorilla Mainframe. Yeah, so so would you say like if you been behind the wall, you can you see the importance of like maybe like if you would have known about it, it the the the, the resistance behind that wall with you seeing a bit how it could have been beneficial to you in t any type of way yeah i had i had seen something you know where they was talking about in attica mm -hmm. you know just uh for them honoring um george jackson they had it, it had caused like a a big riot in attica where the prisoners went you know they, they try to uh resist and take over the prison and uh it was a bit like a, a bunch of guards and inmates was uh, assassinated and slaughtered mm. and as, so they didn't even try to you know bargain with them they just went in there and all the co's that was in there they slaughtered them they were just it was just a big thing from attica prison but it was all inspired from uh black august resistance and uh uh the, the, the dragon george jackson so i knew i had heard about uh resistance and but i didn't i haven't really i didn't have a concrete analysis of what black august was yeah yeah so what would you reference did that happen while you was uh in there or this like oh this happened this happened you know shortly after you know because george jackson had i had read something that said he had inspired over a hundred thousand inmates mm -hmm. his writings so this happened after his after he was uh, assassinated probably a few years after that was if you if you if you if somebody researches the uh oh, I can research it the um Attica riot okay it happened a few years after uh George Jackson was assassinated and it was their way of standing you know in solidarity with him and they didn't you know and and then I feel like because this is a more so a prison movement thing it's not as catchy as most uh pro black stuff it doesn't have anything to do with festivals or anything like that. they actually take you working out and fasting and giving up some so it, it's not as catchy as most other for lack of better word pro black stuff um uh, it and any one of y'all can shine in, in on this do y'all see the important is it important to ask black society you know we black people is black august something important to our our group of people as a whole or it just something like it's more of a niche for a certain group of type of folks so it's something that the whole collective really need to incorporate in practice uh i would definitely like to chime in on that if i can uh, well it's definitely important uh, especially in this day and time and 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 and, and it was important you know, going back to 19th August of 1971, when uh, George Jackson was uh, killed in San Quentin prison. Um, the, the reason why it's important because one, our people have to be reminded to resist and what is proper resistance. Also, it's very important because we live in a day of information technology, artificial intelligence, and a lot of distractions and a lot of devices. You know, information comes very fast these days. Um, there, there, so there means that there's a lot of information that could come to us throughout the day to where we're constantly being distracted. And sometimes we're distracted by things that don't matter, you know? Um, a lot of times, you know, the biggest issue I have seen is that, you know, we're more distracted by celebrity culture than revolutionary culture, and, and particularly the ones who identify as revolutionary. Um, I expect, you know, um, you know, just typical conscious people, 
because you know just because you're conscious that don't make you revolutionary that don't make you um resistant or anything of that nature you're just aware of something mm. you know what i mean and so you know our people that one of the main things that's important with black august is number one fasting you know because when you're able to fast you're able to focus you know and when you're able to focus you're able to put your your mind your spirit and your body behind a certain concept you know so also i feel that you know black august is practiced from you know, from small groups in the free world but i feel that the way a lot of people practice in the free world is watering down they're they're watering down the resistance mm. you know and they usually water it down through some form of control opposition you know and that control opposition is usually like okay we're doing a black august event but the focus is not resistance the focus it's just more of people being unified. And we focus on, you know, unity, you know, for, for the most part, 366, I mean, 365, you know, a year, you know, but we have to focus on uni, unity with a revolutionary principle, you know, and a principle of resistance. And so a lot of times, a lot of people do not like to go into uncomfortable waters and really talk about what real resistance look like. Because when we look at what real resistance look like, it is nothing sensational about this. I can't go on side of the TV and get you hyped up on resistance. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard for me to be about real resistance and try to scam you at the same time. Those two, they just don't add up. You know, and so also real resistance requires sacrifice. And I that's something that I don't really see that culture of people not saying like they need to sacrifice their lives or their health, but they definitely can sacrifice certain time, certain energy, and and most importantly, they can sacrifice their ego. Um so I think that Black August um, for us in the free world, the way it's practiced, uh, we can be a lot more disciplined. But and and two, on the other hand, when you're in prison, you know, it's a lot easier to be disciplined. I'm sure, you know, my brother Ace can chime in on it. It's a lot easier to be disciplined because you don't have too many distractions, right? Like right. When, when you're in prison and you're reading your book at 10 o'clock at night, you don't have to worry about a chick texting you like, yo, I'm finna come through. Right. <laughs> that's not, not going to happen, right? Or <laughs> you're not going to have your kids waking up with a stomach virus and you may need to tend to them. Unfortunately, you yeah. you won't be around them. You know, so usually when you're in prison, you can focus on political education, working out, and any other education. But when you get in the free world, that becomes challenging because we have a lot of distractions, you know? So, you know, that's one of the biggest uh, struggles that we have dealt with and I've dealt with myself personally. I'm not just, you know, speaking on other people, but I'm really speaking from a reflection of myself um, that Black August, that um, for those of us that practice in the free world, that it's a lot harder and it requires discipline you know, and a, and a lack of distraction. Well, well since you, uh, on that, you talk personally, how do you, like, I, this current Black August, how did you practice resistance? Uh, I think before we jumped on the live, me and King, we was talking about what we did this Black August, like, uh, and Rakim, which, like, what was your way of, you know, practicing Black August this year? Well, one of my ways was really focusing on the resistant culture within my household. Mm -hmm. You know, um, within my household, I have four children, you know, and I even have children outside the household. And with those four children, they 
those four children kind of connects me. They're like the connection to the children in the community. So, you know, the children in the community, they definitely um, know me. They know who I am. They know my name and things of that nature. And they know me for like, you know, working out or just uh, motivating them or educating them on something. And so, you know, one of the things I did was, you know, implement a workout routine to to somewhat, you know, build that that spirit of resistance within the youth. And, mm-hmm. and, and both you guys know and um, how my workout routines go. Yeah. Um, it's more than just working out. It's a lot of chance, a lot of response. It takes teamwork, effort. We have to be on one accord, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, pushing the youth to, to working out, teaching them how to, one, how to resist their selves and their own desires. So if we're doing burpees and they're starting to burn out before we reach our goal, you know, I, I encourage them, hey, you have to fight through this. This is not going to be comfortable. This is you're going to have to resist yourself before you can resist anything else. So, of course, was I able to read blood in my eye with the uh, 10, 11 year olds? No, I wasn't. <laughs> but I gave them an idea and a concept of blood in my eye to where they can accept it and relate to it at their age, where it's not something that's too radical that is hard for them to kind of capture. So, you know, that's the way I did it. Now, historically, Black August, you know, is have been a bigger thing for me in the past. Like, you know, when I became vegetarian um, back in 2013, you know, I embarked on that, you know, right before Black August. So when Black August came in, I was able to uh, commit to my fast and becoming a vegetarian ever since I have not looked back. And even with, um, in 2019, um, Black August, I actually 2018 Black August, I committed to veganism. Mm. Um, So um, also Black August have flea days, you know, and these are very important events that happen during Black August that we must acknowledge. And so historically on the flea days, you know, um, you know, we was told, you know, we would fast without eating and some and go without sleep, sleep. And that was something that I was very consistently doing. I was very committed to it, not eating, not sleeping, doing political education and still working out, you know. And so these are things that I definitely would you know, I, I definitely need to get myself back into, get back focused, because I think one of my biggest distractions this year was just working. And of course, I have a um, a, 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 a serious case, you know, um, that has to do with resistance and, def- and defense that I've been preparing, have been preparing and in pre- pretty much getting ready to embark on. And you know, like I said, you know, just the family life. So a lot of that, I struggle with getting balanced, but for us moving in the future, I definitely will move a lot better. And then, and that's, man, I'm glad you brought that up. Like that alone, getting your mind ready for whatever that may come your way is, it's a way of your own black August, you know, of preparing yourself that's because you it was for resisting uh mm-hmm. king king gates me ask you uh we talked offline but what were some things you did for your black august like what did you do what was your resistance right before i answer that um i, I just wanted to correct i had said that it happened a few years later after george jackson that riot in attica yeah. i googled it it said the attica prison riot also known as the attica prison rebellion Attica's massacre or Attica's prison uprising was the bloodiest prison riot in the United States history and is one of the best known and most significant flashpoints of prisoners' movement, rights movement. So they definitely was trying to resist. Hell yeah. Um, 
It happened a month after uh, George Jackson was assassinated September 9th, 1971. But, you know, for me, Black August, I just try to work out five to six times um, for the week. We had did an event to start uh, Black August. We all went on a group uh, hike, um, mm -hmm. trying to get myself more involved doing political education. And we just ended it with, you know, a, a, a feast and political education uh, on Sunday. I really, my, my main thing that I was trying to do was get myself to get back working out. And that's what I was able to accomplish, working yeah. out consistently on high level, you know, so that's what I, that's what I was doing. To get myself back working out at least, at least five times a week. Yeah. And that's the key. I, I feel like with black August, like no matter how hard you go or what you do, long you do something, you know, right. uh, long you, for one, I feel like long you acknowledge the people that started, you know, pr uh, you know, pay homage to them guys first and foremost, uh, try to embody something from one of those individuals, try to yeah. embody something. And then, of course, do some type of fast, give something to make some type of sacrifice, how big or small it is, do something you, you haven't been doing all year or something that's out of the norm. Like me personally, I, I gave up alcohol this month. I, I didn't go out to no hookah lounges. I didn't go hang out and, and, party i ain't no party person i know this hard to believe for a lot of people i ain't no party person <laughs> i hate crowds i hate being around big groups of people i i get anxiety real bad like i i hate it so but but yeah i just i was laying low for real leaving that the booze alone uh so trying to drink more water uh but other than that uh and, and study and study the people that found it they get more in touch you know a lot of times i know I read George Jackson and, you know, we know about George and Jonathan. I tried to learn a little more about the other guys, you know, that's not really be, um, talked about. They don't have books we can go grab off the shelf. Let's read about this person that, from Black mm -hmm. Dogs. So, so you got had to take a little time, do a little deeper research and, and learn about those men as well. So I just tried to challenge myself on that um, for Black August. Uh, man, I... I, I I have a question regarding resisting, like, and and I during Black August I challenged myself with this question. I asked myself like, what are we resisting against today in society today? Like, what can we say? Like, I'm resisting against this. Like, this is this is my stance, and I'm re resisting against. Or the people should be resisting against this. Like, I challenge myself. Like. I didn't want to say the, the 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 vague terms like, "Hey, we are resisting against capitalism and imperialism." Like you talk to a common uh, person on the street, like, "What the fuck you talking about? What is imperialism? What is capitalism? What the fuck you talking about?" You know. So I try to challenge myself to break it down to you can if I like if I was talking to a damn baby, like, what are we are resisting against? And I want to get y'all take on that. Yeah, I think that's. Uh... That's that you you have to be able to you know people can't relate to the you know capitalism right you can't people can't relate to the word capitalism but if you if you tell a person you know that you you make a dollar right the person that you work for is making a hundred dollars right and you you doing most of the work and you don't like your job because you making a dollar and you making a hundred dollars for every dollar you make your boss is making a hundred dollars they can agree with that you know that's economic violence but. You know, I think the main thing for me with, with, with Black August was uh, us, you know, letting people know that we can, you know, we need to create mass movements to um, try to get some of these political prisoners free, right? A lot, of, a lot of these political prisoners, they can be freed if we had, you know, mass movements and we was pushing with resistance. You know, the way we be protesting, we need to be outside in prisons. Uh, we need to be in contact with these people that's in prison. And I, I was just you know, trying to bring awareness to the fact that a lot of these uh, elders that's in prison unjustly, I don't feel like we fighting hard enough for them. Mm. We're not resisting hard enough to get them free. Right. The movement. Right. That, that's a big point. Uh, I, I think a, 
let just hop on that real quick. Um, I agree with you because we always talk about, for example, Batulu Shakur. I don't, and a lot of it's many other guys. Who, I don't think we talk about them enough. Like you just re- recently said, like we should be going harder for political prisoners. Like the, those are prisoners of wars. They're not criminals or anything like that. They are captives, you know. And and if we in revolutionary struggle, we claim we at war. In uh, war, you, you fight for your people. That's that's prisoners of war. So I think we most definitely should be going to. Uh, a, a lot harder than what we're doing now. That's a that's a great point. Uh, Rakim, you, you want to add to that, or like what what are we resisting against? Yeah, um, one, you know, we're resisting, you know, one of the oldest enemy to black people, our ability to determine our own destiny and things of that nature. So, you know, that's definitely racism white supremacy um, under the guise of, you know, imperialism by way of capitalism. Um, All these things go hand to hand, you know, and you can't, it's hard to really discuss one without another because there's a relationship with it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, Um, blockchain technology, you know, that's used in um, finance, that's used in information technology and things of that nature. The way blockchain works is that you have information, a block of information that's connected to another block of information, you know, and they pretty much depend on each other, you know, and if one moves away you know, they'll find a way to just link and keep carrying on, you know, the transfer of information, okay? And that's how it is when you're dealing with capitalism, white supremacy, imperialism, racism, all all of those have a connection with each other, right? So Mm -hmm. we talk about, you know, white supremacy and racism. uh, What we're talking about initially was you know, historically, whites have, you know, stolen and raped and maimed Africans and currently, you know, um, not just in Africa, but all over the world and as well as dispersed us all over the world, right? Now, they didn't do this for the sake of white supremacy alone. They did this for the sake of capital, for profits, for gains. That's right. They didn't do it because they just wanted to find some type of demented way to torture uh, 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 the millions of Africans in West Africa, and they just wanted to do this weird experiment. No, it was all for for gains. Okay, that's what it was for. The bottom line, and so even till today, you know, um, we do do to those gains. We understand that a culture of you know not treating black people as humane and giving them their fuel their full um human rights and it, of course civil rights is something that comes from you know the slave trade because of course for those for those institutions that are behind the slave trade they had to find a way for you know, regular white people to buy in on this concept and not feel morally long, wrong, which is contradicting their Bible. So that's why we say, you know, capitalism, right? Imperialism, you know, is, is one feeling like their motives and their agenda, you know, prioritize over everybody else, even if they're in that space or not. That's that, that's a concept of imperialism, right? Imperialism is saying, hey, even though Kentu, I'm your next door neighbor, and uh, you know, we have a few cars over here, we ran out of space, I'm just gonna park in your grass because my car is more important than you know your right to determine your own uh, destiny with your home. You know, that that's the whole concept of imperialism, but that concept comes from the need of capital. 
Mm. You know, so that imperialism go into making white people supreme, you know, to be imperial. You know, so that whole concept, all this stuff relates. It, it definitely relates. The whole origin of racism with for capital. Right. It's know? a byproduct of capitalism. Right. And so these are the things that we resist. But of course, we resist them on different levels, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, we resist, you know, imperialism by resisting white privilege, you know, um, by re and, and demanding that um, you're treated and respected and under the concepts of civil rights, um, we're resisting um, the criminal justice system, we're resisting the economical system, um, we're resisting um, even certain elements of the education system. And you know, just media as a whole, and pretty much we were resisting this so we can take control of our mental psyche, you know, of our mind. Yes, you know, because if, if we don't do that, then of course, certain elements of capitalism will still be a priority within us, and those elements will be elements that will be which are rooted in white supremacy and imperialism. So when we resist, there's different levels of resistance, you know, and certain people have to resist based off their conscious level and where it leads them to. That's the whole point of political education. Because now we can talk about this stuff and analyze this stuff, you know? It, so if, if we talk about, if we talk about the reason why we should resist certain big businesses, you know. Um, we may find out the reason why we resist this business because it's functioning off of prison labor, you know? Mm -hmm. and so now, am I saying that by Rakim not going to Whole Foods and buying a vegan club sandwich is that it's going to stop Whole Foods uh, relationship with the prison industrial complex completely? No. But what it does, it makes us aware of it. It builds a conviction and we execute on that conviction. And so as we, 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 we start by executing on smaller things. And as we continue to become more and more conscious, then you'll find yourself executing on bigger tasks. Gotcha. Uh... Sometimes I, I feel like I don't think and maybe it don't even matter that people not into resisting at all. I think do y'all ever feel like people are just happy with reform? I'm not, and, and me ask you this. Do y'all think reform is necessarily bad? A bad thing for our people? Like do they do we need to be either you totally resisting or are you with reform or we need to have like a middle ground somewhere like well, how y'all feel about that like i feel like uh i feel like reforms are all right you know i feel like reforms are good as long as they integrate with revolution you know and to give an example of a reform that i that i i do agree with that i would support would be something like uh when we're speaking about police terrorism a community control over policing I think that that type of reform, you know, that can take away the characteristic or that the element of police officers coming into our community acting as a foreign troop. I would say that that a reform of that, you know, magnitude, I would definitely support that. But I would say, you know, overall that reform, as long as we can articulate, you know, to the people, you know, the positive, the pros and cons of the reform that, you know, we they gonna engage in if they if they want to support it and you know we take the time and edu politically educate them on what the reform is, the, you know the pros and cons of the reform, and as long as it's not you know getting in the way of the final uh, revolutionary goal, I, I would say that reform is, is good. Reform reformers often help uh, organizers, you know, mobilize the people, you know, to organize the community in a uh, political fashion. So sometimes. I would say reform is reform is good. Okay. I would say reform is good while pending revolution. 
Mm. Reform shouldn't be the um, overall end goal. And I feel that a lot, I do feel like that a lot of our people have had the resistance um, taken out of them. And and the thing about it, right, you know, um, what was that? And the book, The Die for the People, and in Revolutionary Suicide, Huey P. Newton, he talks about the guy who, you know, is swept away by the broom <laughs> and the guy that's beat, you know, that's beaten by the stick. And he, he's talking about an analogy, right? You yep. have some people who resist and mm-hmm. you know, all the master have to do is just, you know, kind of get a broom and sweep at their feet and they go run you know 100 miles per hour not even looking back you know and then you have some of the some of those who have to actually get beat down you know to to kind of be you know to fall back right i think black people are the first analogy for i'm just talking about as a whole as a collective yeah. you know they don't have to do much you know um, all they have to do is just, you know, pull out their broom, sweep out our feet, you know, uh, cut some, uh, you know, give us some SBA, some stimulus, you know, uh, give us a black female vice president. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we, 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 we don't require much to... You know, like this time last year, we was past 100 days of protest. You know, Black August last year was very important, and we all dropped the ball. You know, I'm going to admit on here today that I dropped the ball, you know, but we dropped the ball because we can all day point at the people and say what they didn't do. But I can think about a lot of things that I didn't do mm. to educate the people, um, to make sure they was aware, you know, because a lot of times we think, oh, I made posts every day throughout the day. But we already know for those who have actually done real boots on the ground organizing, you know, organizing does not start and end on social media, you know, uh, and making these little posts and thinking that it should stick with everybody and they should take that on you know um <laughs> all for us creating that culture you know of, of, and and so what happened well we was able to get ushered in into controlled opposition you know um we got ushered in to um being content by seeing uh Trump losing. And not only that, but we got distracted by watching everything that came with that. It was just like we we really protested over a hundred days. Just we protested all the way until the election. Right. Then we let some AKA with some pearls and Chuck Taylors and a, and a sleepy old racist, uh, uh, sneaky racist white guy come and and just usher usher that protest to the voting booth. All right, we good now. We got Trump. They was like everybody when once Trump got out of office, they was like, all right, we we, good now. we won. We got Joe. <laughs> we won. Exactly. But we should have been, you know, one, we was political chumps. And then two, you know, we had a lot of distractions going on. You know, and I don't want to get away too. I don't want to get away from Black August too much, but we had a lot of distractions. We had all these uh, overnight Black Panthers who, who just popped up out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? With these weird names, with you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, coming and saying that they're the lead and they're the vanguard, and just a few weeks later after that, they became completely exposed and. Everything just became a big entertainment, you know. Yeah, you're right about that. I, I remember now. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, 
You know, really? we was content with guys just showing up a couple hundred deep and, and protests and stuff like that. And everything just became like a, a, a big entertainment thing, right? Yeah. Um, there wasn't no real demands being made. There wasn't no final, we, we didn't establish, you know, final revolutionary goals. All we wanted is change and we wanted to stop um, police brutality, which is continuing today. They just became smarter and they cover it less on media now since Trump out. And then you know? Katrina and Katrina just come and she said they won't even let uh, Kamala hold a press conference. She been MIA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, which, you know, even if she did, it would be irrelevant because Kamala has no interest in changing the status quo for black people for the day. She, you know, as a district attorney, you know, and, and that's another thing, you know, we, we, we must remember this guys, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when we have these conversations, we must remember that we protested police brutality all spring, all summer, just to vote a cop in and, and be content with that. Right. You know, a cop who who was even even as their even as them practicing their law as a district attorney who never show any leniency with children black children or people of color children or adults you know she was known for locking up parents and withholding evidence on a serious murder case mm -hmm. you know so these and and the reason why is because of lack of political education. Now you got you know right. I have some rads who was a part of Gorilla Mainframe who criticized political education, and I'm like, <laughs> why? Where do you get this from? You know what I mean? Because political education gives us a direction on where we're going, and we can explain why we're going to a political scientific method. You know. Right. Just like we explain how capitalism is the main root of white supremacy, white privilege, imperialism, classism, and et cetera, et cetera. You know, we can explain that and show with scientific evidence and historical proof that that's where that comes from. And so we have to have that analysis. I, I, I feel that, you know, we have became we have uh, maintained uh, being reactionary um and you know we pretty much have to really the revolutionaries um we we really have to really look at ourselves in the mirror you know and ask ourselves have we did everything we could mm. to you know hide the um consciousness of the people you know we have to be in 2021 and beyond you know we're not going to be able to use the old 1960s style of organizing we're not going to be able to get people to meet us at the park have a rally and pass out apples and bottle water and people will sit out there for an hour or two and listen to what you have to say Hell no. too many distractions we have you know we have tech Big tech and big tech is definitely working for the agenda of, of capitalism. And so it's going to take us being able to be innovative and convicted and right. finding new ways and new approaches and, and, and even using tech ourselves to bring on this culture, you know, which we're doing it today with, you know, a Zoom call you know, Facebook and things of that nature. But I feel, and and I'm speaking, I'm talking towards myself and those who have organized with me over the years because we know better. I feel that we should be a lot further along right now. We mm -hmm. should we should have more we should have more tech, you know, technology, more technology um for as, you know, um, you know, 
YouTube channels that 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 can compete with the top notch YouTube channels. Uh, we we should have uh, we should definitely have brick and mortar. You know because hey, without brick and mortar, if the people don't have a a place to go and access you, and they can only access you on Instagram and Facebook, then you can't expect them there for them to get move their revolutionary consciousness off of social media. We have to make ourselves available, you know, in which we're not. And there's right. no reason why we shouldn't be available because last time I checked, ain't nobody out here doing no BLA type stuff. We ain't robbing banks. Uh, we ain't offering no pigs and nothing. And we're not even talking about nothing like that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much what we're talking about is how can people in our community work together and be unified and change certain things that's going on, you know, and bring about that change, institutionalize that change. And and, man, I'm glad you brought that up. Like you, you made you made a, a big point. Like we should be further ahead for the ones that consider themselves vanguards and uh, in that aspect. We we got to look ourselves in the mirror. I, th- I think a lot of times we feel like we like to point the blame at the, the society of the people we trying to pull ahead as vanguards. But we got to look at ourselves like, are we are we being creative enough to to, to stimulate the minds of the people uh, right. we trying to organize or be vanguards for, per se? And, and a lot of times we're not. Um, and I think I think some of the the blame for that is because we get so memorized uh, by what the Panthers did and the stuff they did in the good oldie days, and mm-hmm. and we and we like fuck why this shit ain't working for us because the times have changed. That was fucking right. like 40, 30, You know, it was a fucking long time ago. 50, so, 50 years, sixty years. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get more credit and get more up with the times, and and we gotta trade we gotta blaze our own path like we could take those core concepts but we gotta we gotta we gotta do some new shit we gotta get creative <laughs> like the Panthers did they didn't do what Malcolm X did they seen they took some of his core values his core things but they put a whole new twist on the on the shit they did and we gotta be that we gotta be innovative like that like Rakim said we gotta be innovative we gotta <laughs> we gotta be creative we gotta figure out what is the tools? What is the things that can can mobilize and organize the the people we're trying to reach? Usually, it's the the youth we're trying to reach. Like right now, I'm pushing forward. I'm not a young person no more, so I, I I gotta keep up and figure out what okay the people that's in their early twenties, what what things they're doing, what they're on. They on TikTok. I ain't even on TikTok. I might have to start getting on fucking TikTok instead of doing a, a, a YouTube channel. TikTok, like, Twitch, all that stuff. I, what is Twitch? <laughs> man? I ain't that's never what been video on, game. That's I ain't video never been game on social network. Man, see, I see that. That's something <laughs> right there. See there? I'm old already. So we got to get with it. Like, damn, I ain't even on no Twitch, man. I don't even know how to get on Twitch. So, <laughs> so yeah, like, we got to get with it, man. So, uh, that's that's a great point, right, Kim? Uh, we got to get with it, man. We can't keep pointing the finger at the people saying, oh, these niggas don't want to do this. Oh, these niggas <laughs> don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to get into that. But, yep. see, you, you know, we got to – this is the thing, right? Uh-huh. When you have the debates, right, and when it comes to sport, and you know, you can't, they don't. She you know, right when, they you don't, cannot, they don't they do. huh? No, I was, just, I was, I was reacting to that comment. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Go. So okay, I'll say this and be quick. Um, so it's that's why it's hard on espn for them to compare michael jordan to lebron james right or or even compare um kobe bryant to lebron james okay at the end of the day they all ran their own race right you know um of course they admire each other but you know there are some strengths that each one of them have that the other don't have 
and there are some um, weaknesses, you know? So, of course, how will LeBron James play like Michael Jordan when there's an obvious size difference? You know, uh, it, 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 huh? the rules are different. It's a totally different game. The right. culture is totally different, right? Mm. When Michael Jordan was playing in the latter 80s and stuff like that, in the team meetings, everybody was focused and glued in to whoever was talking. Now in team meetings, you got one person talking, everybody looking down at their phones and listening at the same time while they're, you know, doing whatever, right? It, it's a totally different time. And so we have to find ways to be the LeBron James and organize. You know, we have to find our strengths. We have to find our weaknesses, you know, and, and we have to use those things. Uh, I think a lot of it is what stops us is our egos, our pride and our egos, because our pride and our egos will not allow us to step out there and fail. Mm. You know, mm. and some of our prides and egos are a little bit too big to fail, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, that's one thing, you know, by just jumping out there, doing it. Like, for example, you know, boom, we're doing streaming right now, you know. So we have to be consistent with if we're going to stream, if we're going to do podcasts, do videos, whatever. Because, of course, right now, of course, right now, you know, you may only have, you know, 20, 15 viewers or less, you know. But down, but as we keep on being consistent, that snowball is going to eventually have an avalanche effect. And before you know it, just like I was telling, you know, my comrade Ace, is that, you know, before you know it, you will have people two years from now going back listening to your first episode. Your first episode had only had 20 views by the end of the month. <laughs> and two or three years later, you go back and your first episode have 800 views, you know? And so we have to be one, we have to have courage. We have to have commitment. We have to not be afraid to fail, you know? The say, let, let me tell you, the capitalists are not afraid to fail. You Do you know how many times Warren Buffett failed? A lot. You know, when, when, you, when you study these venture capitalists, you know, when you look at guys like Jeff, which, you know, Jeff, his situation is a little bit different, but even Mark Cuban, he failed numerous times, you know? But, you know, having that tenacity to pull yourself up and keep going forward and staying committed to the principle. So that's why Black August is very important that we fast, we focus, that we um, have political education and have somewhat of a political, um, a, a political um, um, accountability group, because technically, you know how business most businesses, you know, they have their year, their calendar year, and they have a fiscal year. As revolutionaries, we should have a political year, right? And that political year should always start in August. Mm. And, August is kind of like an incubator. You know what I'm saying? It's like it should help you when September hit, you just take off. You know what I mean? Right. You I'll, take off because one. We're talking about that. Me and Kente were talking about that. Hmm? Before the show, me and Kente were talking about we should, you know, we want to use this month to motivate us to, to go forward. Yes, you for know? the rest of the 11 months. Right. You know, this, this is really in political. And in a political year, this is month one, you know, and, and it sets the stage, you know, uh, being uh, political education uh, and, and even still maintaining fasting. You may not fast with the same discipline that you did in Black August, but you will continue, you know, to maintain that fast. You will continue to maintain working out. You'll continue to maintain strategizing, organizing. And you know, and two, just being more disciplined. Right. And then one more thing before we get off, I want to go back to Katrina comment. She said, uh, the people have been robbed to sleep as long as the basic needs are being met. They don't think they need revolution. Man, that's oh man, that's a big one. I think we all that's said heavy. a lot. That's heavy. That's heavy, Katrina. 
Yeah. Shout out to Katrina, man. That's our comrade, man. We can't, we, you know, we got to acknowledge Katrina. Yeah, somebody. Katrina, yeah, that's that's BEM right there. She she uh she definitely come out to support all organize uh organization uh special GMF uh everybody in the Fort Worth area. You know, she lent a hand whatever needed. She told me she always tell me like Kent too. I'm just a soldier. Just tell me where to be at. <laughs> I like. I okay. believe it. I believe. It. <laughs> But that that's that's heavy though, yeah. and and that's one of the struggles we got to deal with. But but even though the people' basic needs are met, it's always something else not being met though that we need to zone in and focus on. I feel like something is definitely being left out, you know, because if if that was the case, we wouldn't still be having the high crimes that we have. People because of something not being met, that's why people still do petty crime something is not being met you know there's a lot of things that's not being met but i think what she meant for is food clothes and shelter for the majority of us there's yeah. still a big homeless population in every right. city in every county in every state right. you know united states you know how it, united states does it sleeps it sweeps its third world mm -hmm. under the bridges and the alleyways of your community yeah. so you don't yeah. know that hey i'm actually living in third world <laughs> You know, but yeah, um, but you know, just like <laughs> it's always been said, conditions create revolution. Right. Conditions, but you gotta understand the capitalists know that. See, yeah, they do. see the capitalists are, are way more politically educated than us. We have to catch up to them. Right. Okay. They understand this shit to a scientific method, and that's why this shit been rocking the way it been rocking. And, and read all the books. Exactly. Read all the books. But you know, with, with that being said, they won't create those conditions until they know they got us. What, what I mean is they're they're currently building their infrastructure, right? We're just, you know, playing video games, watching TV, not really paying attention to what's going on. Then, you know, before you know it, somebody come in and they'll take something off your dresser. Then for you know it, they come and take the dresser. Then you know, you take the bed and they and for you know it, you wake up, they're pulling the PlayStation while you're playing it, right? But that yeah. same PlayStation, it would have you distracted when they empty out the rest of the room. Now they're taking everything. But keep in mind they knew once they take the PlayStation, we're gonna resist. Cause now it stops us from being distracted, and we have no choice but to acknowledge this um, elephant in the room, which is a vacant room. And once we resist, they're like, "Okay, now we're ready for you resist," because we have something. We think we have something that's gonna be able to stop your resist. So that's why you you have had numerous revolutionaries saying that we shouldn't wait to the capitalist society create the conditions where we have no choice to resist we must meet them to that before they meet us you know with their we must meet them with our agenda before we they meet us with their agenda right okay and, and because we meet them with our agenda then they either have to um be diplomatic and go along which you know would be still a form of reform or they will have to embark on premature um, civil warfare or revolution and things of that nature. And that's not what they're trying to do because they're still, you got to understand that right now, especially in this day and time, we're in a big, um, we're in a big international market. You know, you have China is, is ripped. Their economy is number one. You got India, number two. Uh, America economy is number three. Okay, so we're, we're we're trailing behind, you know, and the way things are going, based off of you know the economy alone, you know we're we're we're, we're you know America is already in trouble, and so of course it needs as much diplomacy as possible. That's why big businesses, you know smart money hedge funds you know got behind the democrats right they got behind all the um they got behind all the candidates but they really got behind the democrats because the democrats 
are the ones who are the most diplomatic internationally and um, nationally, not just internationally and nationally. And they proved that, right? We seen Biden, Pelosi, and everybody else with their kente cloth this time last year <laughs> taking the knee. And, and these Negroes is very happy. Some of them, they they got their picture as they cover page on their Facebook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, so of course the, you know, by doing that, um, and by improving relations with China, which happened overnight once we got Biden in office, because. You don't have a president keep saying, you know, the Chinese virus, the Chinese virus, constantly saying things like that and, you know, and referring to them in a certain way. Because we have business relationships with China, yeah. you know, um, their businesses are on our markets and, 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 and a lot of our market depend on their businesses. You know, so that's why it's very important that we shouldn't just go along and be alone because they give us a little bit. When they give us a little bit, we should see that as a weakness. We should say, oh, dang, they giving a, dang, hold up, hold up. No, we had a Black Lives Matter NBA season. <laughs> we had, you know, all your grocery stores had Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter was everywhere. Now you go to those spots, you don't even see the shit no more, right? It was just like, it was like we was in a, that's how we know we had this system. It, it was so obvious, man. But we didn't, we didn't execute. We didn't execute. You know, we was too happy to run ourselves to that fucking polling, to that poll. You know, we was too happy. You know, and even now, you know, um, you know, the SBA, the PPP, uh, the STEMI, man. I mean, we got the buying cars and, and stun and Mm -hmm. <laughs> they open up the club too. Oh, they knew what to do. They 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 open up cities and states knowing that that was not gonna be a solution. That wasn't a real viable solution. But they had to do that. Because one, their market cannot go too long with being suppressed. Right. Two, they know. That as long as we're not in their plantations, you know, either on their phones, on their machines, or mopping, sweeping, or whatever we do for a living, you know, sure. if we're not doing that, then we're then that means we're not distracted, right? And if the government's paying our bills and stuff like that, then we can focus on things that actually matter now. Right. And and man, that's 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 heavy shit right there. And that just that just give you an idea of like the the toolbox the enemy has to put our people back to sleep, and and I'm, I guess I'm a I'm gonna end it like this. Um, the bring it back to Black House with with knowing what we going against and what the the what tools they have, and and what we taking from Black August. How can we go, come out of Black August and push forward? now to incorporate that that cultural of, of resistance to our fellow people that we trying to organize how what uh i, I guess i go to you king ace first you coming out of black august um with your organization like what is your plan to like we've been talking about the things we're dealing with uh our own faults what the enemy is using what you plan on taking from black august to incorporate moving forward uh going going forward uh, i continue to you know i want to continue to build a pipeline between uh, my organization and the political prisons i wrote several political prisoners mm. i want to embark on this uh podcast revolutionary podcast to build a revolutionary platform That's a, i think we really need that and then also integrating that platform with you know practical programs so we want to start pushing the uh back up the Vanguard Community Survival Program. So that's the three things I'm focusing on. Man, good shit. And, and, and I, I definitely want to uh, reach out to you. I want to start back, coming back out to Dallas and, and working with Conrad's out there. I, I kind of miss uh, making that 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 drive out there. I don't mind making that drive out there. I need to start back dealing with my folks. <laughs> hey, man, uh, you be north of us, man. 
<laughs> you know, I gotta get back out there, man. You over there, and, uh, we 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 know what parts of towns you be coming to over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't come to y'all. You know, I'm gonna come to y'all side. Oh, man. I mean, I'm gonna fuck with you, Rockhead. What you got planned on uh, moving forward with Black August? Now, I know you got the kiddos now, man. But I, I, I be seeing you, man. You, you on the low making moves over there, man. What you got planned moving forward? Well, my biggest thing is, you know, trying to get, you know, other channels uh, off the ground. Of course, you know. Uh, you know, I'm working in a part of Black Royal family. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of endeavors that we're trying to work on and okay. get off the ground. But, of course, you know, with me, I'm not just somebody who believe in, you know, one organization. I believe as a collective, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just, and you know, historically here in Dallas, we have had our most political influence and did our greatest thing when we have had a mass coalition of solidarity we have to get back to that mm. you know we have to get back to solidarity you know our groups can maintain a, uh, being autonomous but we must you know make sure that moving forward that we work on you know incorporating our interests and in our work at you know uh and two we're going to have to get off of here, you know. Uh, of course, we're going to come on here to reach the people that we need to reach. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, next time we have these type of discussions, even on the Zoom and social media platform, we need to be in person. You know, uh, that's what it's going to take. You know, see, one of the biggest things that when you look at the church, you know, we must really, I think the conscious people, we become so disgusted by the church that we don't really look at the value of the things they do. One thing they do have, like like I said, is a brick and mortar and they're constantly interacting with each other face to face. Right. So no matter, you know, how somebody faith may kind of wander off and things of that nature, Sunday or Thursday for Bible study or prior uh, rehearsal on Wednesday, you're going to get straightened and tightened back up and get back on your holy road. Well, we, we're not doing that as revolutionaries. We're, we're not meeting up. And two, a lot of times we meet up in our own groups. We have to get out of that. You know, we have to get out of just meeting up with our own groups and meeting up with collectives and caring and others to meet up with collective mm. even if it's just having a basic conversation we need you know why we're not having any conferences you know when you look at the revolutionaries that's here in dallas you have some heavy you have the country heavy hitters you know you, you got the cream of the crop I ain't, you know you got a lot of great revolutionaries in other cities and states but i'm talking about historically you know, when you think about 10 years ago and 10 years before that, 10 years before that, you know, Dallas was doing revolutionary things. We, we can go all the way back from the 70s with the original Panthers. We can go to the latter 80s with the new Black Panthers and the start of the new Black Panthers being here in Dallas. And we can go up to the early uh, 2000s with, you know, um, other organizations, uh, that were similar to New Black Panthers, but different ideological wise, such as, you know, Guerrilla Mainframe, uh, you know, uh, and other organizations, BEM, uh, Black, uh, Black Royal Family. There, there, there are just so many different organizations and groups that we have here in Dallas today. Well, we have to find some way for those who are revolutionary, because now what I'm seeing in Dallas, you kind of have more of the revolutionary scholars kind of linking up and doing things and having conversations, but the revolutionary like boots on the ground type guys, we're not doing that. You know what I mean? And if, if we don't allow ourselves to continue our work in person and continue to build the culture, then what's going to happen? You're going to have a subculture that's going to come up from, from that. And that subculture may be 
um, politically educated. It may not. It may be militant. It may not. But we won't be able to. Um, we won't be able to criticize that culture unless we do the things that we're supposed to do. So you know, moving forward, that's some of the things I'm gonna be trying to do. I'm gonna be trying to get us together as a collective and find. I don't care if it's a small program or whatever to where we can have everybody have equal amount of leadership because that's another thing that you know we must focus on not having one solid leader but having numerous leaders yep. come together and meet up in a diplomatic way and the people need to see that because george jackson said in blood in my eye there would not be no super slave yep so what that means is there he's referring to us you know the working class black person there won't right. be this super polite guy that's going to land with a cape <laughs> and he's going to have all the answers <laughs> you know because a lot of these people they, they go to sign out the channel looking for these people you know they what I'm super negro <laughs> yeah they, and, and, and then because somebody show up with a lot of information and things of that nature we expect this one person is going to be the lead we we have saw we saw that with Huey, we saw that with Malcolm. It's gonna take every single one of us, and that means those who are listening and viewing. So you know, moving forward, that's what I'm be doing. And 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 on that note, people, uh, to close it out, if you if you like the things you hear, you want to reach out. Hey, go to uh, uh, Black Roar Family on YouTube. Uh, find his channel, reach out, email him, Black Roar Family. Uh, Look up Rakim Balagoon on Instagram, Facebook. Reach out to these brothers, man. You know, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, reach out to these brothers. That's all get together. And and we not know people that get messaging and ignore it and just say, oh, I don't know this nigga. I ain't going to message back. No, we not like that. Hit us up. Reach out to me on Black Empowerment, uh, our Instagram, Facebook. I'm Kentu Sankara on Facebook. Hit us up. We all need to organize together. It's going to take a collective to get this done. And uh, and I'm definitely going to be reaching out to Rakim, Black Royal Family. Uh, we're going to be doing more stuff like this, talking about a variety of topics. I, I like this. This is my first time doing StreamYard. Uh, I like this convo. I like how it flowed tonight. And, uh, and just from this conversation, I kind of want to divvy off in another topic, but I'm trying to stay in the lane because the right kill he got he he was like oh I like man I want to go down that road right there. But <laughs> we're gonna try to keep it in black August. That just season. mean we we gonna have to do this again, right? Kim and King Gates, we gonna have to do right. this again. Uh, but other than that, people, please be sure to uh, check out Black Empowerment Movement on YouTube. Subscribe, like, share. Please do Black Royal Family. Subscribe, share, like. Look it up. And um, other than that, people, we out of here until next time. Peace and power. All power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people.